show number 45. And we decided, woohoo, we got us a horn. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, we are here on a boat. We were going to be on a dock, but we had, we got us howly came in. Woo, but we didn't care. We're going to have a show anyways on a boat. Something's going to happen and it could be good. Something's going to happen and it could be good. Something's going to happen and it could be good. Something's going to happen and let me know. Change and leaves will fall and it will rain. Transform before your eyes. No time for chasing. Why? Why did it have to rain today? Oh, oh you never know when just how life is going to go. So you jump in your boat and row, row, row. Jump in your boat and row, row, row. Here we go all together. Ready? Something's going to happen and it could be good. Something's gonna happen and it could be good. Something's gonna happen and it could be good. Something's gonna happen like we do. Yeah, boy. Whoa, yeah, you gotta aim high and go for your pie in the sky. Go ahead and trust yourself. Everything will ride itself. Oh yeah, well life's a stream, so go ahead now, follow your dream. Jump in your boat and row, row, row. Jump in your boat and row, row, row. And something's gonna happen and it could be good. Something's gonna happen and it could be good. Something's gonna happen and it could be good. Something's gonna happen, and let me know. I noticed that we didn't plug this uh, uh, this microphone cable in, but it's pretty quiet in here. See on the bottom there. See if it'll go in there. We have Ida on the. Uh, oh, we have Ida on the. Uh... All right, folks. Let us know if you can hear us better or worse, or we don't know. Um, we're down here. Uh, we're at the wharf in Coromandel, and um, it's a bit of a of a of a of a rainy day. Um, we're, we're blessed with the rain. We had uh, a lot of drought, a lot of dryness, and um, last week I was singing a, singing a song about drought, and today this one's called The Bottom, you know, and um, Gulfport, where I live in Florida, they talk about how Gulfport, what do we got there? Oh, we got we got some excitement going on behind the camera. What do we got? What do we got? How's it going back there? We got a new grip. <laughs> we got a new grip. Are we all right? Are we good? <laughs> we good? Yeah. We we talk about Gulfport as being where the sewer meets the sea, and I guess this is kind of the same place where the sewer meets the sea, like because the water runs down. Anyways, this is a song called The Bottom. We'll get wet down here when it pours. We'll get more. Oh, oh. When it pours, we'll get more. When it It all runs down, it all runs down to the bottom, or to the bottom, what they call trickle down. The water keeps moving, but even when it hits the ground, water only one way you know oh, oh. water only flows one way you know water only goes one way and that's down one way and that's down 
down. Yes, it all runs down. Yes, it all runs down. It all runs down to the bottom or to the bottom. the boat about an hour ago the boat was uh, stuck in the mud and now as the tide is coming in we're we're rocking and I'm like whoo this is a new experience for me singing on a rocking boat Pam come and join me here for a second here come on Pam no Hi. we're Pam y'all remember Pam from last week um, Pam invited us down here we were gonna do a little show on the dock but instead because of the weather we've had this little show in your boat yes Thank you. Blowing for a gale. <laughs> blowing a gale. Is that what we call it? Is that what yeah. we call it? A gale yeah. here? Do yeah. we have a, is it a northeaster or a southwester? It's a northeaster. We got us a northeaster coming in. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, do you expect trouble tonight in your boat? Um, we pretty well have to tie everything down tight because stuff goes flying around at night. Um, it's supposed to run it run to about 100 k's tonight. So. 100 k's. Somebody do the math for the. Yeah, that's fast. That's like 50 miles an hour. Yeah, so. well, I'm going to be in my hut on the hill, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll be here bouncing around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> We're on the vessel, should I say it time? Yeah. Uh, MV Clematis. And Let's say that again. MV Clematis. Clematis. Which is named after a New Zealand flower. Um, it was built in 1938, and so she's 80 years plus now. Um, was it built in New Zealand? Or yeah, it was built in Port Chalmers. It's here on the. The oh, wheel, here on Miller the wheel. And, and um, it's served many purposes as a fishing boat. It was used during World War II. The Americans requisitioned it and used it to look for Japanese in the Fiji. In the Fiji requisitioned. Islands. What does that mean? Like they took they it. They borrowed it. And <laughs> <laughs> they did some great stuff to it. They copper lined it. They did loads of good stuff to the boat. And they gave it back to New Zealand after the war, and it was a fisheries boat, a police boat, a whale watch boat, um, tour boat. I used it as a charter boat for years. It's had so many lives. In every port I go to in New Zealand, somebody knows this boat. The history goes way back. Yeah, that's so. that whole small country thing. Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, it's a small country. How many people in New Zealand? Do we have a number? Oh, five million. Huh? Five million. Five million, not that many. You run into people you know right next door yeah. around the country. So, Everybody's yeah. seen your boat. And it's a good, solid old cowrie boat, 17 ton. Cowrie, um, that's the wood yeah. that it's made out of. Yeah. yeah. And there used to be lots um, of cowries. Yeah, it's a great piece of history. Um. What were you saying about volcanic plumes? Okay. I'm always, we're always talking I about just, things, and I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Tell us about that. I just got a, a message from America this morning. Somebody reading up on New Zealand said that there's this seismic volcanic plume under New Zealand that's been discovered, and it means that the volcanic the volcanism in New Zealand comes from 3,000 miles down in the core of the Earth. 
And there's only a couple places, Hawaii, I think, and Iceland, where that happens. We're the biggest. So no wonder we have so many volcanics and so much, you know. The, volcanic, the, the volcanoes here are pretty prolific. And that'll be why. <laughs> because of our volcanic plume. We've got a volcanic plume. And uh, they were um, a couple scientists, one's named Stern, I believe, from um, Victoria University. And they've now proven that this existed. And, um, so it's been there the exist. whole. It's been it's been there the whole time, but yeah. we're now just. Yeah, they've found it because it's so deep, but um, it's big. It covers all from quite a bit of New Zealand, oh. North Island. The whole North Island is under a volcanic plume, which means <laughs> above that, it, above it. Yeah, we're up. yeah right. We're over it. It's yeah. under us. Yeah. Okay, so there's all that unrest under us, but yeah. we seem to be doing all right. Yeah. Huh. So. Um, That'll be why we get places like Rotorua and places like that. Yeah. So much activity. So it's like Rotorua yeah. has like hot water pools, is that right? Bubbling, yeah, yeah. bubbling, bubbling water. mud. Yeah, and so. actually not far from here, you can go to a beach where you dig a hole in the sand and hot water bubbles up. Yeah. I've yeah. never We're been. We're very but. close to the edge of this volcanic pool. Very close to the edge. Wow. Wow. That's so, well, thank you for having us here on your boat. You know what? The one thing, this is something that I learned about Pam. Pam is one in a million. Okay, now I'm going to let you think here. What could this woman, <laughs> among us, probably one in a million for a lot of reasons. But this is, this is so exciting to me. I've got a one in a million person standing next to me. And are you going to tell them or am I? Go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, I've never had any tooth decay or cavity in my whole life, and I'm getting old now. So I don't think it's ever going to happen. My dentist even told me it's not going to happen. He said, if it hasn't happened yet, you're clear. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's genetics, and I'm very lucky. And I've had free dental most of my life because they keep experimenting on me to find out why I don't get cavities, I don't get tooth decay. And that's literally one in a million people that have no cavities or went into adulthood. Is that the? Yeah, yeah. My dad had none until they took a wisdom tooth out, chipped the one in front, and he got a cavity in that. And that one. Otherwise, he would have been another one in a million. So. Like, if we, if I touch you, will I get some of that? No. <laughs> My sister didn't even get it. Your sister didn't even get it. <laughs> so there you go. And like, and who knew that, uh, that that was a thing you could be? You could be a one in a million kind of yeah. girl. Yeah. A lot of people are very jealous. Yes, very jealous. <laughs> and uh, what? And, and you say it's genetic. From what? Uh, what is? My father is um, large part Native American, and yeah, he had good teeth. Oh, so. And my dentist assures me it's also the shape of the teeth too. And he he's only seen it like maybe twice in his whole dental history. So. Yeah. Well, there yeah. you go. One in a million women standing right here. Yeah. That's all right. And thank you so much for having us on your no boat. No worries. Yay. You're okay. welcome. I'm going to take your thing. I'm going to let you relax now. Thank you. She was like, what? I was on the show last week. That's like, we get people all. Uh, okay, so how how's, is there anybody out there in uh, in Facebook world that needs to say anything to us? Hello, Ann Leaf. How are you? Here we are down here. At the, what do we just call this? The Wharf. Yeah. Like the wharf in Coromandel, not the wharf in somewhere else, not the wharf in San Francisco, the Fisherman's Wharf. Um, well, you know, sometimes I feel like, sometimes I feel like the Marlboro Man. Remember the Marlboro Man when it was cool to smoke? And he was cool. He had that hat and he went about his desert life on his horse, but he was righteous and upstanding. You know, and he like, he knew right from wrong and he had a cigarette to prove it. <laughs> well, this song, <laughs> this song I'm about to sing here is called The Stand. And it's about sometimes you really got to stand up for, for what you feel is right. And if it helps you to think about that Marlboro man, you can do that. You know, just put on your, your imaginary white hat. Get yourself, gird your loins and stand up say what needs to be said. It ain't easy and it ain't right, but sometimes a little guy's got to stand to fight. 
And I'm not going down, and I'm not going to drown. I'll jump in that river and swim. I'm not going down, I'm not going to drown. You're going to see me win. You're going to see me win. Well, now you know I don't fight. But what you're doing, it's just not right. And you might be big, and you might be tough, but your hand I will call. And you'll get mad and you'll play rough, but I will see you fall. I will see you fall. From where I stand, I can see all the ways you're cheating me. And do you even sleep at night knowing it's a sin? But if I don't stand to say what's right, well, I've let the devil in. That's me letting the devil in. And it ain't easy and it ain't right, but sometimes a little guy's got to stand to fight. I'm not going down, I'm not going to drown. I'll jump in the river and swim. I'm not going down, I'm not going to drown. And you're going to see me win. You're going to see me win. Well, you know the fastest way to hell is when you know the truth, but you don't tell. And it's not all right to hide behind the fact that you are small. We're all small. You stand up tall and you will find someone to heed your call. Might be the Lord heeds your call. Cause it ain't easy and it ain't right, but sometimes a little guy's got to stand and fight. I'm not going down, I'm not going to drown. I'll jump in the river and swim. I'm not going down, I'm not going to drown. You're going to see me win. You're going to see me win. Woo. I'm a fan of the peaceful protests. I think that um, it's all right to stand up and say what you got to say. Sometimes that's difficult. But um, around the world, there's people standing up and saying what they need to say. And I say, peace on you, brother. That's what I say. All right. Um, I am going to get us another little guest up in here, Pam's uh, what? Stepdaughter. stepdaughter. This is Pam's stepdaughter, <laughs> Kayla. Kayla has been um, drafted. Come on, Kayla. We've drafted you into the... <laughs> Dear Kayla, thank you so much. I so appreciate you taking time to um, to chat with us. You know, this rainy day, and we didn't know what was going to go on, and uh, so I appreciate your uh, taking time to join me, Kayla. You're now, welcome. where did you grow up? Great Barrier Island. The Great Barrier mm -hmm. Island. Now, we were talking about that last week. That is an island that has no electricity? No or? mains power. No mains yes. power. Uh, and is there, where do you get the water? From, with a bucket and a creek. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no mains water. No mains. And you, you spent, you, 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 were you born, you spent yeah, your yeah, whole life yeah, there? born and raised on Great Barrier Island and um, 80, maybe 70 percent of children leave the island for high school. So uh -huh. I left at 14, 13. And where did you go when you left? Uh, to live with my mum's brother. Well, so he was a detective sergeant, married to a policewoman. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> So you acted, you acted right? Yes. <laughs> I sure did. And, uh, for one you, year. For one year. I acted right. And then you got, did you get in trouble? Do we want to talk course, about that? No, no, not really. No. Yeah, okay, yeah, well, sure. She got in trouble and now she's Everyone not in trouble. Everyone on this thing's in Coromandel. So yeah, yeah, so, well, well that's right. Uh, and uh, what, what are you drinking here? This is, oh, this is this something is... interesting. This is something interesting. Mm. She's like, you used to be a barista, is that correct? Yes. Make yeah, it, Judy like, manages selling alcohol to the public. Okay, see this lovely plant? Now, what do we call this plant? Kumaraho. A kumaraho? A kumaraho. <laughs> <laughs> what ho? We ain't talking about no ho on my show. <laughs> We're going to talk about a ho right now. Okay. And it's very mighty. So, kumaraho is what I'm drinking today because of um, my sore throat from my hangover. Yeah. 
And so, uh, and so it's like it's a plant that grows on the... It's a shrub and it usually dry, uh, grows in high altitude, not low, uh -huh. and um, it likes the dry hot weather. And when the flowers are in season, they are bright yellow and you can use them for soap. And it's um, great pH balance these things. Wow, well, that's exciting. And uh, yeah, and so you're not necessarily preaching, you're just doing it for yourself. Yeah, I'm doing it. For, because you um, think it's going to be make you feel better for today. It will make me feel better. Um, I was raised on it and then broke away from it and um, had a very bad diet. And I've just recently decided to try again. Well, what made you decide to try again? COVID. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you just wanted to boost, boost your general. <laughs> Boosting general immune system. Boosting. I'm a big believer in it. And um, now's the time to really work on our immune systems and fight any virus, any sicknesses. It doesn't have to be a particular one. Right. So just get some, uh, what is it? Good exercise, mm -hmm. fresh food, mm -hmm. light. Yep. Live on a boat. Live on a boat, <laughs> air. Yep, exciting. <laughs> do you live on a boat now? Where do you live now? Oh, I, I live downstairs. Oh, so you're, oh that's, that's right. You're actually staying here on this boat. Oh, well, yeah. thank you for having us. Uh, I'm just home. Yeah. <laughs> what a lovely little home you are. Yeah. What a lovely little home you have. Yeah, I'm very lucky um, to have Pam since I was four years old. So. Yeah, we decided. We coordinated our outfits, our white. Yes. Where'd you get yours? Oh, from? yes. So mine is from the Fidianga Op Shop. Really? Um, I think it's a hundred percent, oh, ninety-eight percent of my clothes from the op from the op shop. Mm -hmm. An op shop is like a thrift store. That's what we would call a thrift yeah. store. And um, why do you shop at op shops? Because I believe you could never find another sweater like this. No one will ever be wearing the same outfit as me. Yeah, that thing is beautiful. It's like covered in. Yeah, bed. it's actually. This thing is like beaded up. We could. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we could sink good. a boat with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like anything that's yeah. different. <laughs> you like things that are different, mm -hmm. and and uh, and you're not. Um, Materialistic, no. no. No, so it's okay to wear things from me. I'm, all my clothes come from yeah. a secondhand shop, and that's okay. And what happens if you run into the person that left it at the op shop? We don't care. They just. They I don't. just think they're probably jealous because it looks better on me. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> One day, I was, I had gone to a clothing exchange and I had this pair of pants on and I was walking down the street in Coromandel and this woman goes, "You're wearing my pants," <laughs> and I didn't know she wanted them back or what, you know. But it's really awkward. <laughs> You should have just taken them up on the spot and I handed them have, over. I could have handed them over, but I didn't. <laughs> ah, and I noticed that the one other thing that, that we're both wearing feathers in our yes, hair. Yes, I love like, feathers. Like, where's mine? Mine's over here somewhere. I think mine's still there. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Okay, give us, uh, what kind of feather is this? This is a moor pork feather. Moor pork? A moor pork, which is uh, our native owl. It's very uh, spiritual to our people, and there's a big story behind that, but the short version is um, a dear loved one passed away seven days after me and my friend had found that in her house and it was her mom's so. yeah so I put it in my bongo drum and i travel around with it yeah and we uh and this is this i don't know the this white feather is from the kereru oh beautiful yes. but it's the it's the breast feathers i've been wearing the green feathers in my hair but this is one of the the breast feathers of the kere, kereru kereru yeah kereru. beautiful bird that's the beautiful birds mm. um so you stayed out late playing music last night? Yes, we did. Where did we, you play um, music? I'm at a friend's house. It was the first time everyone's got together and had a jam for about for this particular group of friends, maybe a year or two. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So it's very exciting. Very do you want to do you want to play some music? Are you good? You want to beat on a drum for us? Yeah, maybe after um, the end. Okay, you can, <laughs> we can join in at the end. Um, do you have anything else you want to share with uh, the public? Yes, there was one thing, since okay. um, it's the reason why I'm on here. Yes. <laughs> Looking great. Um, yes. Is I, on the barrier, they took away all our rubbish bins and all the big skip bins as an initiative to Rubbish try and get bins people. is a trash can, and a skip is a dumpster. Just a little translating yeah. for you people who don't speak English. <laughs> okay, carry on. And quite an extreme thing was done where they took away all those um, places where everyone's used to dumping rubbish, you know, throwing it in and... And so when I went home, I um, got a little, like, more conscious of what I was throwing away, of course, and then thought, um, oh, I wonder if everybody's rubbish bin bags in the city, since it's already happening over there, we don't have that many, but they were see-through and clear so that people would be more conscious of what they put in their bin because, you know, nothing like embarrassment. I think embarrassment is worse, you know. Right, so the idea is that if you're putting your trash in this black plastic bag and then you shut it up 
it like disappears but whereas if you put it in a like clean clear, clear bag, one and then out on the street in front of your house it's pretty obvious that that, like, oh you know you just chucked a whole lot of scraps in that rubbish bag and that can go in the compost and bag. then yeah well there's and, fish frames and all sorts that go into rubbish and it's because you can't see it people will put it in a bag tie the knot and then in the bag so it won't smell you know but you'll be able to see that yeah, so uh, it's sort of like, uh, I don't know, I was like, I'm not sure if I believe in, in shaming, as a, but maybe we're not shaming <laughs> the people idea. that put the bad stuff. Maybe we're just showcasing those of us who have yeah. less in our, well, like That's on the true. Great Barrier Island, mm -hmm. okay, uh, you would bring things in on a boat, I guess, yeah, like your see. flour and sugar mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then what did you do with your garbage? In the old up? days, a lot of people buried it, buried mm -hmm. cars buried generators, buried everything. And after the storms and everything, it washes out for our generation to clean up. But yeah, instead of worrying about whose rubbish it is, it's more about getting our generation just to not worry about that and just to start picking it up and cleaning it up. Who cares? It's, we're all one, you know. Yeah, I used to always say, it's like, I don't want to know the name of the person who messed it up. I want to know the name of the person who's fixing it. Hard out. That's yeah. you. Right now. And you. And you, me You're and sure us. Me. All of us, you know. <laughs> wow, that's really, that's an interesting, um, an interesting concept, that clear, clear trash bag, like see it. Because uh, it is out of sight, out of mind. So. Yes, and I've done absolutely zero market research on this to see if there even is a thing, but um, here well, you, you go. If you get some comment. ideas, yeah. <laughs> Anybody have any comments on this subject that they want to <laughs> share with us? Do you we believe will. that that would work? I mean... Yeah. yeah, it might make a lot of mums who use diapers and things like that quite like, oh, I didn't realise how many nappies that we even put out until you see it, you know. Right. Well, like, they don't know, they maybe don't realise. Yeah. yeah, if they stop collecting your trash, you notice it pretty quick. Yeah, we had that, uh, the recycling piling up, and that's when I had to decide to turn my recycling into pots for plants. I've, uh, I've taken all my recycling milk bottles and cut them and planted a native tree in it, mm. and then I can give those away later. Here, that, that's my, um, how's your, how's your drink going there? Great. Pretty good, yeah. eh? You yeah. just pick the leaves off and, and drink it up. Yeah. I'm going to try today. some of this. I'm going to try some of this later. Yeah. Cool. All right, Kayla. Thank well, you. I so <laughs> appreciate your taking time, um, to just talk, you know, and, um, your, uh, if you had a kid, would you take it back to the barrier, Great Barrier Island and raise, or you do Yeah, I did do that. I did try that. I did. I thought it was unfair to not take my children back after I got such a privileged upbringing on there and to see how they, you know. Oh, you call that a privilege, not having any electricity and running water? Yeah, I, I don't call that. that a privilege, no. I choose that. Like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if you Anyone want to who knows me knows that I like living simple. <laughs> All right, well. You you have your you can you can choose to have nothing if you want. Yeah, I'm gonna live outside under the trees. Like I really am that native. <laughs> You're beautiful. Thank All you. right, my nice dear. To meet you. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. I'm gonna take this yep. off of you, and thank you for taking time to just chitty chat with us. There's all sorts of people in the world, you know, and and it's interesting how um, there's all sorts of ideas, you know, things that could make your life better, uh, make somebody else's life better. I don't know. Family. Family's interesting. Um, I'm going to sing a song, and this song, we call it, I call it the Grandpa Song, and it was actually one of the first songs I ever wrote, and it's about family. Oh, yeah. My grandfather was born on Election Day, and when he was born, his father was proud. His father went running up and down the street telling everybody, there's a new Democrat in town. And everybody was like, who? He's like, my boy. And so, you know, my grandfather was a Democrat, or my great-grandfather was a Democrat. And when my grandfather was born, his father presumed he was going to be a Democrat too. And I don't even know if it means the same thing as it meant then. But anyways, people tend to um, want their children to grow up like them. I don't know. born on election day a democrat for the world as people say he turned 95 and he's still alive a slow smile shining eyes oh, oh. the moon 
ghost on the wall at Grandpa's house. It's been dead for years, but it's still the same. And I go around every year or two. My uncle's drunk, ain't that a shame? Grandpa turned 95 the other day. Half is mine, but he's okay. Oh, oh, oh. The neighbors come around to sing a song or two. And his wife throws his clothes out the back door. Well, I don't understand why they live like that. But a little less luck, I'd have been there too. My grandpa turned 95 the other day. Half is mine, but he's okay. Oh, 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 oh. oh. And Blanche comes round at the cocktail hour with a scotch and water and a tale to tell. Basil doesn't know what it is I do. I told him three times, but I don't mind. This grandpa turned 95 the other day. Half is mine, but he's okay. Oh. I've told him three times, but I don't mind. Cause Grandpa turned 95 and he's still alive. A slow smile, shining eyes. Grandpa turned 95 the other day. Half is mine, but he's okay. Oh, oh. Well, Grandpa turned 95 and he's still alive. My grandfather actually lived to be um, 102. And when I wrote that song, he was actually 98, but it didn't rhyme quite so well. So we said 95. And I'd sit down and talk to him, and he'd look at me, and he'd go, now, now who are you? And I'd go, well, I'm Nina's daughter. <gasps> Nina's daughter. And he'd go, well, are you in school? And I'd say, no, I've graduated. And he'd go, oh. He'd go, you taking care of you? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm earning my own living. And then he'd go, now, are you married? And I'd go, no, I'm not married. And he'd say, he'd say, well, uh, why not? And I'd say, well, well, Grandpa, I'm looking over the herd. <laughs> he'd slap his knee and go, looking over the herd? That's funny. And then he'd go, now, now, who are you? And I'm like, I'm Laura. I'm Nina's daughter. And we'd go around like this. And then his wife, that's his third wife, he outlived. Anyways, his third wife, Blanche, she'd go, she'd get real mad at him. Basil, you've already asked her that six times, but I didn't care. I mean, because it didn't make any difference to me. We can say the same thing over again. That's what we do in conversations. Anyways, we're all talking about the weather. And um, anyway, so I wrote that song. Weather. The weather. <laughs> uh, this song is called French Girl, and it's about love when you travel. Because, you know, you go traveling and you fall in love. Ooh la la, look at her walk. Yak, 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 that's too much talk. The French girl, you watch her walk. A French girl, well, listen to her talk. Oh, mais oui, said the boy, ooh la la la, guess to be. A blue moon is once in a while, a blue moon in miracle miles. Oh, those are figures of speech. One step, two step, give it a whirl. Yeah, 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 oh, I love you, girl. A southern boy, ain't he tall? A southern boy, oh, listen to that drawl. I just like to listen to him talk. Late, late, late. 
late on Thursday night. The moon was full and hands held tight. Ils sont bien means I love the band. And je t'aime bien means hold my hand. Just how they said it, no one need to know. There's a language of love and they let it flow. A voulez-vous? I'm in love. A voulez-vous? Ooh la la. We all know what that means. <laughs> her and she writes to him they can't wait to be together again but the blue sea it's deep and wide the blue sea why she's on the other side Ooh la la we think of her walk and yak 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 is too much talk but the French girl she's gone long gone a French girl Ooh la la yeah, traveling, do a lot of traveling in the world. I'm on the other side of the world, or I'm on this side of the world, but some people think I'm on the other side of the world, and those of you here think I'm on this side of the world. But in fact, I'm on the other side of the world. Um, I've been writing songs for a long time, and I tend to write songs with a lot of words, but sometimes I give myself a, an assignment, and I'm like, I don't know why I put so many words in my songs. I'm just going to say the same word over and over and over again in my song. You know, that's by the way, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's like I figure my, my songs are too uh, wordy and, and important. So I, the, the assignment on this song was um, to uh, just say the same word over and over again. And when I was writing it, I was here in New Zealand, but I was headed back home to Virginia at that time. And I realized, you know, um, I don't know if you all know this, but that the world's a magical place because here I am down in the Southern Hemisphere and we're going into winter. And those of you in Gulfport are going into summer. And so, uh, you know, I think of a hot day as, as uh, July 4th, like hotter than the 4th of July, that's what we say. But down here, like January 4th is, and so I was sitting with a friend of mine and we were writing this song and, and, and I said something about a hot day and I said, uh, July 4th at the same time as he said January 4th and I thought how interesting that is and so that's in this song It's an endless summer and time is going by January 4th or the 4th of July well, where I come from January's cold but I don't know why parties we had back then first you're going but now you've been and I know we'll dance again but I can't see when Say goodbye. The 
Last time I saw you, you cut my hair. And everyone in town, they just stared and stared. Now I know we'll be together again, but I can't see where. going to be there. <laughs> yeah, that's for all of you that have fell, fell in love in one country and then your love has gone off to a separate country and traveling back and forth. It is kind of interesting. You're either a goer or a comer, you know, and when you're leaving, are you going or coming home or going and it's all very confusing life. Are you a goer or a comer? Is there anything anybody in the world needs to say to us? Yeah. Do we have any news from the from the camera? French girl is such a cute song. Oh, nice, yeah. From Abuya. Ah, oh. well, there you go. I wrote that for my friend Amandine, who came to stay at my house as a. She was a little French girl that came to stay, and she was delightful. And uh, that's uh, well, okay. If anybody has a song they really want to hear, you can type it on there if you can remember the name. Hey, James, why don't you come up here and chat? Let's talk about our morning. You all remember James, perhaps, if you've been watching the show regular. James, um, James here, Thank you. you're the star quarterback. You were supposed to be paying for uh, Brazil. Yeah. Yeah, because when we talked, you were, um, uh, you were just like, so, you know, here in New Zealand for a little while, earning a bit of money before you were going to go to Brazil to be the quarterback mm -hmm. of the football team. Yep, yep. And now what are you? Just nothing. Just <laughs> nothing, man. <laughs> so I'm waiting. I'm no, sitting here waiting. Sitting here waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, well, I'm told something semi-serious has happened around the world. I'm not sure what. Oh, it is. okay, right, right. And here we are. So we're but, waiting. Um, yeah. So the league's been cancelled. So there's no season, which is pretty unfortunate. But I get to be here for longer which yeah, is nice. Yeah. I get to come on the show again. Yeah. It's amazing. I noticed you've been uh, planting vegetables around the, the place where you're written. Mm -hmm. And um, is it a, and you feel like uh, even though you don't own the house, you can plant vegetables anyways. Yeah, and absolutely. If they, and if they called you tomorrow and sent you off to play football, uh, you'd just leave that food in the ground and walk away from it, wouldn't you? I'd take it. Take it and go. I'd take it. Yep. Put it in well. the suitcase <laughs> full of soil. Take your That's soil, all I got. It? Yeah, all he's, got, all he's got is a few parsley plants. And, uh, you're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty good. Yeah, and I think you're you're experiment with, experimenting with the no-till gardening systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for yep. those of you who know, some people till up their soil and some people don't. We'll let you research that on your own. But that's uh, we're we're going with no-till for James at the moment. James. Um, uh, thank you for coming to pick me up. Um, I don't have a car. I generally walk around Coromandel, but you know, had some things to carry down here, and I'd never been down here to the wharf, and uh, and so thank you for bringing me. We had a uh, we had an event on the way today. Now we're going to ask um, we're going to ask everybody out there in computer land. You know, okay. So what happened? We were driving down. Everything was fine. So it was all good. We were looking at the road. We're driving down, and then there was a bird. And the bird started flying, but not quick enough, and we hit him. Bang! And he dropped, and I could see him in the rear view, and he was flapping like that. So we thought, oh, we've got to turn around and see what's up. Okay, now wait a second. Why do we got to turn around? Why did you feel like we had to turn around? Because he wasn't dead. Okay, so he if wasn't he, dead. Because he wasn't dead. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 carry on. So that hunter instinct come over, you know? Ah, kill! Arr, still fresh. Yeah. No, so we picked him up. We picked. We had him in oh, our well, hands. That, well, wait, wait, wait. Before that, though. Okay. So, oh. so he comes back around, and we, and we turn around in a spot where we pull off the side of the road. We open the car door. What do we see laying on the ground? There was a dead rat. A right dead there. rat, right there. Right now there. it was good and dead. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, okay, now we got, we got a, we got a half dead bird, and a wet and drowned dead rat. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, now what kind of a day is this? <laughs> 
I think it's that corner. It's that corner. <laughs> they need to put high crash zone warning signs. You know, animals could be splayed. Yep. Okay, so yep. so we went back. Uh, I sat in the car. You jumped out, mm -hmm. and you picked up the bird. Yep. But all it his, wasn't dead. All his, all his friends were around him. Yeah, that was kind of closer, interesting. They yeah. all hopped off, and then he sort of tried to go, but he couldn't go because I got him. So I picked him up, and we took him and into he handed the car. Him, hands me a bird, like a kind of half dead bird. Now, I got no problem with a dead bird. Yep. I got no problem with a live bird. It's them half dead birds. Okay, so now we've got this, and he was clearly injured, right? He had a yep. little floppy foot, His like foot this. Foot was just yeah, no. exactly. So now we had a big, we had a decision to make. Yeah. Like, stomp him. Yep. Out of his misery. Yep. Lead him on the side of the road. But we'd already, we'd already turned around, and picked him up. I had him in my hands in the front seat of the car. Now I'm holding him in my hands, trying to keep calm, give him a little reiki, like I'm going to heal this bird. I'm going to heal him. Except that little floppy foot. I didn't have much hope for that little floppy foot. No, and uh, so no. then we deciding like, what are we going to do with this bird? Like, so we decide what's the best possible life for this bird in a box. Like, mm -hmm. at, he was never going to fly free with his friends again. And no. so now we're debating. We're debating whether we should kill it, put it out of its misery. And James was, you were willing yep. to, to do him in if we thought that. But like, but then, <laughs> then he's got a better chance if you don't kill him of having a happy life. Yep. <laughs> we Absolutely. didn't know what to do, and we had to get down here uh, because it was we had to run the show, right? And so we decided, well, what we would do is we would stop and get a box, put the bird in a box, because birds can bleed to death internally. Mm -hmm. And if this is true, this I found out because I had a pet bird and I took it to the vet because it had been hit by a car. And the vet told me that, it, that a bird can bleed to death internally. So what you want to do is keep it still for 24 hours and, de and quiet. And then that will keep it from bleeding to death internally. So that was my great bird knowledge. So I said, well, let's get a box and put it in a box. But um, we, pulled, we pulled into the grocery store parking yeah. lot. But by then it had it had gone limp. It was just... Toast. Yeah. yeah, it was a dead so. bird. Which, you know, which some people might have thought of as sad, but I was kind of happy. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit we of thought... a relief. I mean, I, I would have liked to keep it for the eggs, you know, good eating. <laughs> but, uh. <laughs> well, some, some thrush <laughs> eggs. You didn't even know if that was a male or a female. We could have eaten the bird. But we didn't eat the bird. Why didn't we, cook? Why didn't we pluck the bird? He was kind of small. Because that's after the show, lunchtime. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> no uh, so what, what we chose to do with the bird, we chose to put him in the compost pile. Yep. You yep. know, to, to regenerate him. life. So then he's going to be in our cucumbers next year. He's yeah. going to be, there'll be a cucumber with two wings, uh, I reckon. Yeah. What so do you that, reckon? I, I, I don't know. I reckon we should have. bring it on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So that's so that was our that was our morning two dead animals mm -hmm. and um, I think we did the right thing. Yeah, yep. yeah. I feel good about it. Yeah. Okay. I feel good. I feel good. Does everybody else feel good? Do you think we did the right thing? I mean, what if we just left it alone and let nature take its course? Yeah, it could still be there in the rain, yeah. sitting there on the side of the road, suffering. Just suffering. Just suffering. Yeah. So. Alleviating suffering is important in the world, yep. even if you have to smash something. Yeah. Let's see. That's the warrior in you. You're like a. He's like, I'll take it out. All right. All right. All right, James. Do you have anything else you want to share? What do you? Okay. So now that you know, you used to be a traveling mm -hmm. uh, football star, and now you're not traveling. You got any uh, plans here for? Yeah, we might. Uh, we might stay in Coromandel for a while. Um, maybe look at opening up a smoke shop. So yeah. we'll see how that's gonna gonna pan out. So instead Not... of being a traveler, you'll be a shopkeeper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yep. what there's some uh, there's grant money coming from the state or the the, yeah. the country. New Zealand is offering business yeah. loans. Small business grants and and for... they'll get you on your feet and up and running and all that sort of yeah. stuff. So. So if you happen to live here in New yeah. Zealand, like why not give it a go? Is there something you always wished you could do? Me. Yeah, well, go to Brazil and play football, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> see what I mean? You'll be playing football in Brazil. Okay, well, that was our story about our, our, our moral dilemma this yeah. morning. Yeah. 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 I might have kept driving. Yeah. I hate to admit that. You know. Normally you I just mean, chuck it in reverse and... Go back know, over hear it. Hear that crunch. Yeah, well, see, it's yeah. like I didn't even hear it. It didn't even make any much noise when it hit the bottom of the car. No. No, oh hardly goodness. anything. We, right. hit, we got him in the grill. 
Yeah, is that what it is? There might be a feather in the grill. It might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you could have. You should be. You need to have your feather because. Um, you know. All right. Anyways. All right. So we're going to send you on your way. Thank you. All right. Thanks Do you have for anything me. else you want to share with the, uh, the world? Oh, just power to the people. Keep rising. There you go. Do what you think is right, even if it stop, and go back and get your bird. Yeah. yeah. Even if the people in the car are like, no, nah, that's okay. You can leave him there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. I admire that. I admire <laughs> your, uh, I admire your taking on that responsibility because as soon as you, um, as soon as you pick up the bird, it's your responsibility. That's it. You know. That's you know, it. So. Maybe right. I you just rip with the suffering bird. Okay. Uh, See. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Well, there we go. Uh, you know, there's all sorts of stories in the world, and we ha we all have to. That's what I was talking about making a stand. You all have to decide what you think is right. And um, if that means, ooh, we got like, again, we got the weather coming up out there. Oh, I see some police lights over there. I don't even want to know what's happening over there. Oh. Yeah, there's some excitement going on outside. Oh. Yeah, as long as the sirens don't go off. weather. I'm delighted for the rain. I'm tired of them cracks in the ground. If I had a dollar, I'd tell you what I'd do. Put it in my pocket and walk away from you. I walk away singing, singing, walk away from you. a song about like when you're done putting up with stuff you can just walk away oh Ida haha ha. come here show me your shoes Ida we're gonna bring Ida <laughs> sorry Ida <laughs> Ida speaking of walking show these people your shoes how do I do that oh uh, there we go <laughs> there you go there you go sit down sit down yeah yeah okay can you see her shoes these are like can I take your shoe off? Yeah. Allow me to remove your shoe for you. Oh, you didn't know it was going to be one of these shows, did you? Look at this thing. This is like a piece of fabric with a little bit of rubbery stuff in it. And it's like super comfortable. Yeah, super comfortable. Yeah. It's just like walking pretty much on the ground barefoot, but you got like a little protection so you don't see the rocks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like wearing these big old clumpers. <laughs> and uh, James, let's see your shoes. You got yours on? What do you got for shoes, James? <laughs> We're talking foot gear. 
Yeah, we're talking foot gear here. Now you've got the, uh, you got your, let's see. Okay, this man has these little, one, this little piggy went to market, and this little piggy stayed home, this little piggy had roast beef, and this little piggy had none. This little piggy ran over a bird this morning. <laughs> All right, now, why are you wearing these funny toe shoes? Like, both of you seem to have this, like, real relaxing foot gear going on. Yes. Um, <laughs> when I met James, he already wearing them, so I was like really interested in them because my feet, has, my feet sort of go a little bit like this. Yeah, not really pretty because I used to wear like really too small shoes, just didn't know really. And since I've been wearing them, it feels like amazing, so much better. Yeah, your toes can breathe. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. Then, like what I when I try to explain it, it's more like when you put your put your foot in a shoe, your foot sort of has to match the shoe, so it sort of fucks it up a bit. But when you just put on your these ones, so you make sort of like a footprint in there, your own footprint, and that way, yeah, it's more the other way around. Yeah, take care yeah. of your feet, people. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of your feet. Wear some shoes. That are, I like going barefoot most of the time, but if you got to wear shoes, those are awesome. And we'll let you guys can source your own shoes. We don't sell shoes on this show. This is not a shoe sales. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you, like, real people wearing different shoes. All right, thank you. Yay, Ida. We're getting towards the end of this show, and um, it's just, like, what a blessing uh, to, have, uh, to have this beautiful... Outside, we got what? Ooh, things are happening yeah. outside. Ooh, what do we got? Oh, well, Kayla's daughter's being blown off the wharf. We don't know. <laughs> All right, we're gonna sing one more song and get us out of here. Um, I wonder if Kayla wants, well, she's saving her daughter from being born off the, blown off the wharf. Put your troubles in a holy basket, people. When you get your troubles, when you get where you're going, your troubles will have fallen out of your holy basket. There you go. Oh my God. Things are shifting here now, folks. We got to get this show done because, like, we got us a holy coming in. We got us a Northeaster. <laughs> Pam's not scared, though. Kaylee's got her children coming. The, 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 the weather's picking up. They're bringing the children onto the boat. I'm not sure what that's about. You'd think they'd be running towards the hills, but they're not. They ain't scared. All right. Does she have something that she wants to say to the oh, people, you think? All right, let's see if we can get her. We'll open up and see if she wants to get on here. Let's see if we can get some, some local color. you want to be on TV? Do you have something you'd like to say to the world? Come right up here and say it. No. Okay. All right, do you have your drum handy? You want to drum along? We're going to go. We're going to finish out this show with Carry My Rain in a Bushel Basket. All right, ready? Don't jump freight trains when they roll by. Don't like the blues, I'll tell you why. I go downtown when I want to smoke, and I'm treating life like a joke. But I won't go sinning in my neighbor's yard, because they've been working a mighty hard. I go downtown, but I don't wear shoes. Oh, no, I don't sing the blues. Carry my rain in a bushel basket, and I'll carry the sunshine too. I'll carry my rain in a bushel basket, and let the sunshine through. Carry my rain in a bushel basket, carry my rain in a bushel basket. Carry my rain in a bushel basket, and let the sunshine through. I won't get cross if you smile at me And I throw my troubles out to sea I don't wear black or need a heart attack Cause we could be happy, how about that? I don't think much about what could go wrong And I don't want to sing about it in a song But I'll look at you and shake my head Cause Lord knows there are some people who'd be better off dead Carry my rain in a bushel basket, carry the sunshine too. Carry my rain in a bushel basket, but let the sunshine through. Carry my rain in a bushel basket, carry my rain in a bushel basket. Carry my rain in a bushel basket, but let the sunshine through. I don't see Saturn when I look at the stars, but I know it's out there and so's Mars. I don't think much about the evening news and I do not sing the blues. 
I don't like ham, but I do like toast, and I certainly don't care who you hate the most. I don't care how it's always been done. You could give in, but still have some. Carry my rain in a bushel basket, carry the sunshine too. Carry my rain in a bushel basket, but let the sunshine brew. Carry my rain in a bushel basket, carry my rain in a bushel basket, carry my rain in a bushel basket, let the sunshine through, you let your sunshine through. Let me see that fancy mushroom right there behind you. Oh. It's almost over, folks. It's these are little, I know, these are some little field mushrooms that grow around here. It's good mushroom weather. These ones are totally edible. Do they have a name other than field? Everybody I know calls them a little field mushroom. And they're yummy. And that's going to be Pam's breakfast. We're saying goodbye. Ooh. Look, oh. woo! That's like I told you, man. The boats are starting to, it's happening. Things are happening now, folks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.